First off, to answer your question, hey Ian, did you go to the island school? Well, yes, I did in fact go to the island school. <laughs> There's nothing I've learned more during my 18 years than the value of time, so I'll try not to waste years. Before I jump into my story, I'll give you some context to what this program is all about. The Island School is a 100-day program based on the island of Eleuthera in the Bahamas, offering two semesters in the fall and spring. It focuses on experiential learning, sustainability, and working to discover solutions to real-world problems. Let's make a video now. During the fall of my sophomore year, I attended the mandatory meeting in this theater uh, regarding semester and school year abroad programs. I had some interest in applying to them after my dorm leader freshman year, uh, John Norfleet here, would constantly wear on school apparel and talk about his experiences there. I left the presentations with interest in the High Mountain Institute in Colorado and the Island School in the Bahamas. With Millbrook Winters and an interest in marine biology in mind, I decided to go with the latter. I began the application process. I began the application process, finishing in a Boston hotel where the city was literally shut down because of a crippling snowstorm. This made me confident that I made the right choice. <laughs> I left here in Millbrook, here in Millbrook, after the first semester in December last year. This left me a lot of free time before my departure on March 3rd. Yes, three months is a pretty long time to be out of school, but don't worry. I structured it with fun things like beginning the college process getting Spanish credits through tutoring, ACT prep, and pre-semester work for the island school. Although it was structured, I did find myself struggling with too much time. At times, I really missed the hustle and bustle here at Millbrook, even though it can be stressful at times. I thrived on the regimented, regimented schedule. Upon arriving at the island school, I was introduced to a saying, the semesters here take on the shape of an hourglass. So what do they mean when they say the semester is shaped like an hourglass? Upon arriving, you are entering a metaphorical bubble similar to the one here at Millbrook. You are immediately cut off from the outside world along with your access to the internet. You begin to settle into the dynamic of the school and how it functions. A week in, everyone is divided into a three-day kayak expedition group that will separate everyone for a few days. Later on in the semester, you are divvied up again into eight-day expedition groups. Forty-eight hours of this eight-day expedition are carved out for your solo. This is the narrowest part of the semester. After this, it begins to open up again as we have parents weekend, final projects, all the way up to the point where we depart. This solo is the main focal point when I think back to my time at the island school. So let's get into it. So as we left the Exuma Islands after six days of sailing on a 30-foot boat, we began to pick up information 
coming into the group's leader in, coming into the group leader satellite phone that our solo location would be changed because of a local threat. A former convict by the name of Ted Thompson, who had a history of, with the Island School, had been spotted asking students strange questions and was later seen in the bushes of the school's campus. We were told that we were changing our location to the Schooner Keys, a small chain of islands off the coast of Eleuthera, because an incoming storm threatened the sailboats we were on. This was also true. After mooring the sailboats into a cove near campus, we were given 10 minutes to pack a dry bag with as much clothing we could fit into it. We boarded our dive boat, the Cobia, and set off the two islands. Upon arrival, we were handed a tarp for shelter, a small Ziploc bag of food, a water drum, and a bag net for a head, a bug net. We were split into two groups for the two islands, with one faculty member on each island in case of emergency. We stepped off the boat with our supplies over our heads and walked towards shore, where we were dropped off one by one onto designated sections of the island. It was getting dark at this point, so once I was given my territory for, ter territory for the next two days, I began setting up a living space and shelter. While I was doing this, I wasn't thinking about the storm uh, we were being told about. As I crawled in my sleeping bag under my weak suspended shelter, I watched flashes of lightning in the distance. I still somehow wasn't putting it together that this storm was coming. I just saw it as something pretty to watch as I fell asleep. Two hours later, I woke up to rain, 45 knot winds, thunder and lightning, and my collapsed shelter on me. I thought at this point, I can't really do much. I'm wet, my sleeping bag is wet, and I'm in the elements. Might as well wrap my sleeping bag around myself and sit on my life jacket so I would be grounded from the lightning. I didn't have much, of a, have much sense of urgency. I just sat there in my boxers and shirt with a sleeping bag wrapped around me, falling asleep, slumped on the ground. I woke up early in the morning after a scorpion stung my foot. It was similar to a bee sting. I, just, I decided to move away from the bushes and sleep the rest of the morning on the beach. I was just waiting for the sun to come out that morning as the rain subsided. I embraced it as it did, but only for a short while as it rained for the whole morning. Finally, around what I would, what I would assume was noon, the sun broke free from the clouds. It was finally warm again. I didn't, think, I didn't think the Bahamas could get that cold. The storm was so bad that it washed away the comforting items like a tent the faculty member Jason had brought. So they, were, they too were on a solo of their own. So I was looking a little bit like uh, Tom Hanks here <laughs> in Castaway. Uh, it was after this kind welcoming to my solo that I could really sit and reflect as that was the only thing we could do. No book, no foraging for food, no contact with others. So I would sit and think about life in general, writing down whatever came to mind. Now 48 hours may not seem like a lot of time to be by yourself, but with no way to keep time and no structure to the day, these 48 hours seem to last forever. Again, you may not think that this was that long in the way that we see time day to day, but I found myself reacting to the relative time. There was one point when a boat of researchers slowly passed by my beachhead. I heard one of them say, hey, there's one. Because I felt like a caged animal, I acted accordingly and slowly crouched down and retreated into the coppice where I couldn't be seen. <laughs> I began to think that this was the natural way to carry out a day as humans were supposed to. Disconnecting myself from electronics and dedicating my day to reflection upon past experiences in life so that I could know how to react and think about future ones. In the final hours, I found myself anxious for it to be over. Tired from the lack of food, heat, and general boredom, I figured I would sleep until it was time to be extracted. When it was finally time, like a spiritual figure of guidance, a faculty member Jason came to my site, told me to pack up my things and walk to the drop-off point quietly. It felt so good to have human contact and a belly full of food that night. To close, I want to leave you with two messages. One being that time is one of the most important things in life. It's the one thing that can't be made up for. I urge you to be present in the moment offered and make the most of it because it might not be offered up again. And two, that semester programs like the Island School will leave you with many great life lessons that I'm sure you won't find in the same way here at Millbrook. A solo experience isn't offered here, nor is class 30 feet underwater. We are fortunate enough that Millbrook supports these programs and makes it so that we send students every year to the multiple organizations that make it possible to learn in a different setting. Thank you.